Ultra Quest. Let's get in, and the lid is off. Mmm, nice fresh smell. Got that going for us so far. Join the team. Hey team, this is Mugwire Review, and we're going to be taking a look at an unboxing today. We're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. We all know what Alter Quest is. I think at this point, this was a huge Kickstarter by Blacklist Games. It's probably, I would say it's definitely their most uh, popular or successful game to date would be Alter Quest. We are probably going to do another video out in the future where we just do, I think, some gameplay of this game. But today we're going to do a quick unboxing because I'm really curious in how the final production of this really played out. So let's get the cleave out and we will start our official unboxing of Alter Quest. Now I will save the Kickstarter exclusive stuff here for, uh, for later. Let's get into the base game. What I'm opening now is just the base game. Off comes the shrink. Again, I have not seen this at all, and I've been kind of staying away online with any videos um, that is about this because I really want to make sure um, I get this on camera, and it is kind of my first um, look at this in the miniature quality, cardboard quality, print quality. Doorbell. Okay, Alter Quest, let's get in, and the lid is off. Mmm, nice fresh smell. Got that going for us so far. Okay. All right, so right on the top, we've got the rule book, and I do like the nice bright colors here. You can see, look at, look at the bright colors, how this stuff is really popping. That's nice to see. So the print quality looks really good. Let's get into the rule book. Oh, very nice. Okay, threat decks. What we got here? Okay, I, I really like the layout of how they're showing the cards. Um, nice, well, and spaced. It's not a very long rule book. Uh, as you can see there, it's going over the turn, the different things you can do in a turn, equipment, healing, damage, all the different types of cards. Campaign rules. So we got a little campaign part here in the back. Okay, cool. So there's the rule book. Here is the uh, story guide. So this is the full story guide of the game, and it goes through chapter by chapter. I don't want to really spoil anything there, but you can see that there's chapters that it's going through for each one of those. Oh, some fantastic artwork in there as well. Um, everything looks good here. So the print quality is excellent. We're going uh, to put the cleave sheath right up here. Print quality looks good so far. All right, now we've got a number of cardboard on the top with our tokens. Let's pop one of those out. Okay, just got our standard medium thickness uh, token. Those look good, and the artwork on those look really nice as well, especially the little, the little uh, bag here. That looks great. Okay, so cardboard check. That looks good. You know, I'm really impressed so far. All of the printing is high quality, high color. Everything looks really good. You can see there just how high contrast those colors are, which is something I really like to see in games like this. Sometimes these tokens can get lost on the game board. We're going to take a look at that here in a second. And this will allow us to have um, a nice visual when it's on the table and being able to see those. Now, this is one, okay, one big board, six panel, Okay, nice. All right. So, this board does look very similar to what I saw uh, in the original prototypes as well as when they were at Gen Con. I think this might be a little bit brighter than uh, maybe what I saw at Gen Con a couple years ago. This is probably a little bit brighter. These, these purples and blues and greens are kind of jumping out to me a little bit more than what they did uh, originally. So, I, I would assume they did brighten that up a little bit. But that board looks really cool. And then you can see how now these tokens are going to be able to be seen really easily on the board. And that's important. A lot of times, you know, if you don't get your colors right, then your, your tokens are not going to be able to be seen on the board. Okay? So there is the board. We'll, we'll close that because it's going to be hard to keep that, keep that open. 
All right, now we've got the dice. Let's check out the dice. These dice look cool. Okay, it's kind of your standard board game dice. Uh, they do look pretty cool. They're light. These are these are lighter. They're definitely a little bit on the light side, but that's perfectly fine. Those look really good. And then we have these here. Okay. Bear will get an overhead a lot a lot of this stuff up close here very shortly, so those look really good. We do have some uh, bases for the miniatures that you'll find right here, the colored bases. Put those back in. And then the packs of cards. Okay, so let's just open up one of these packs here. Open up this first one. Okay. Oh, these look great. Okay, so the artwork looks really good, really high really high quality artwork nice popping colors these look these look awesome okay the artwork looks amazing really really high contrast poppy colors too very cool this is so cool ah these look great okay we're gonna get some close-ups on this stuff as well i will go ahead and uh put some of these out see the artwork those are looking really good for an example I'm not going to go through everything uh, there's obviously a number of packs of cards in here there is a ton of cards so here's all the cards that you're getting in the game and just the base games so as you can see a ton of stuff there there's just a ton of this all right now into the awesome looking miniatures now i will say that Within mine, the doors, they look great, but they are all over the place in here. And I think what's happened is they've kind of slipped out of the uh, the holder here. I don't think it's made a problem with, like, you know, with anything. Like, nothing seems to be damaged or anything. So here are the doors. And these all follow a an approach where you've got the door and the door is, like, um, hinged open. But it is one solid piece. Those, these are not moving doors. They're not moving hinges by any means. They're just kind of hinged open uh, on the table. So those look pretty cool. I like to look at those. They do have really good um, sculpting to them. The, the stone looks really good. The door looks really good. I mean, I wouldn't say they're like overly sculpted, but they're sculpted plenty enough for a, for a stone door opening. Let's get over here to these miniatures. Everything else we got in the box is going to be miniatures and there's all kinds of cool stuff and again this is the base game all the kickstarter stretch goals are in here so just for the base game you're getting a number of really cool different sculpts that are included in this bear go ahead and hit us with the overhead cam as we go through these miniatures got the uh the little uh little bookcase here this is a very interesting one because there's there's a lot of three-dimensional depth in these miniatures especially with these furniture pieces here they've done a really good job with this here's sort of a the the wizard's kind of um table there a little potion table with different things on it with some books and there's a skull and that's really cool oh here we go the mushrooms i always thought this was a really cool piece here the the mushroom piece and then you know this was an awesome this is one of my favorite little sculpts i think in this game um, this is so cool. The little halfling. Ah, I love this one. Love the little halfling. So you can see there the hero characters are in the nice light baby blue, which actually is a really good plastic. I mean, it's, it's picking up the, the detail of this, of these sculpts really well. They're really coming through on this. And I will say these are very highly detailed sculpts. Like they did not they didn't cheap out at all on this. I'm really impressed so far. Let's get out the frogix here. Oh, looks so so cool. Yeah, these these are these are great. And I love the little frog miniatures. That's just thematically I think that's really cool. The uh, the enemies that are that were in this game and designed. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. 
Yeah, the, the enemies in this game were designed, I think, really well. It's got a really high amount of fantasy theme to it, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, let's see. Let's get this one off. Okay, so you've kind of got your your frog people, and then you've got these, like, pig uh, kind of people. Um, and then you've got different other things, like... Uh, let's see. These are all pigs. These are all pigs. You've got sort of a... Um, I don't know. This is more human looking. Um, I'm not. I can't remember exactly what this is. If this is like a banshee or not, but it's you know kind of looks like that. We've got another uh, more human looking, probably a vampiric kind of. You know that this guy looks just kind of a more standard kind of human type enemy. And then you've got your gargoyles that look absolutely fantastic. These are awesome, and I love the little pedestal that they sit on top of just adds to kind of that look and that pose. They could have just put this literally right on the base, but giving it that little pedestal that sits on really is going to add a lot to the look of it sitting on the board. Okay, that's all the different types of enemies that you're going to find. Ah, oh, here's the pig bombardiers, or I'm not sure exactly what they call them, but that's kind of what it is. They're carrying a backpack of TNT and dynamite and uh, little bombs, and there's a bomb in its hands about ready to chuck and and throw. That's really cool. And in the other hand's holding like a stack of, of dynamite. So I absolutely love the enemies in this game. Really well done there. Those look great. That's going to be a lot of fun playing through that. And, I, and this is what I'm talking about here with the doors. I, I'm not sure what happened. They just got all like kind of jumbled up in, in shipping. Now, you can see that there is molded insert sculpting where those doors will all go in but i think it just got you got bumped and then it got jumbled and um you know it's all right though it didn't damage anything the, this one was on the bottom what would have been bad is if these would have got into here and then got pressed or crushed that could have been a problem but that obviously didn't happen so we're going to put this back in here now we're going to get into the i'm going to set this down and not block bare Okay, we'll leave a few of these out, and now let's get, uh, let's see, well, there's the cleave. That would have been bad. Set that over here. Now let's get into the stretch goals that came with the game. Again, everything we've gone through so far is the base game or anything that would have been added to that base game based on the Kickstarter. Everything here is the Kickstarter exclusive goals, and they also had a... At least one expansion that was part of the Kickstarter. It, I did not. I didn't get that. I just got the base game, and obviously you, you you got this big box full of stuff, and it it's hefty. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that you get extra as as part of that Kickstarter. So let's get that open. And I love the box design as well. This is really cool. They went with um, you know not just the same art, but a completely different art style with that map, which I think is really nice looking. Okay, so right off the top here, it's got the stretch goals. Now, this is nice. Here's a lesson for game manufacturers out there, and, and not everybody does this. When you have a Kickstarter stretch goal extra box, or even if the things that are put in the base game are Kickstarter, put one of these sheets that tell you what's Kickstarter, what's not, and what it's for as an add-on. I don't know how many games I've gotten in the past where... It's like, I don't know if this is Kickstarter or not. I can't remember because, again, you have to think. These games literally deliver a year, sometimes two years later. After you've backed them and purchased them, you're not going to remember unless you go back to the Kickstarter page and try to go all the way through and look at everything again, which I've had to do in some situations. This right here, you've got everything that you need for the Kickstarter. So here you go right here, stretch goals. I'm just going to tell you all the different stretch goals that are included. It looks like 135 extra miniatures in here. Oh my god, is that right? So here's the uh, another board that we've got. Uh, wow, this looks cool. So now you've got a secondary board. This is what this board is going to look like. Again, it's a six panel, just like we got here, but it definitely offers a different, a different look and a different layout. So that's pretty cool. Put that over here. Make sure we keep that separate. Uh, there is a ton more cards. We'll get all those out. There's a ton more cards. Some more little uh, bases. Wow. This many more cards. So tons more cards. 
there are more um, special dice that are included. There is a couple special miniatures that are in this pack right here. So these were a couple of the add-on Kickstarter miniatures right there. And then a number of trays again, two trays, ah, three trays, I'm sorry, there's three trays down here. This one at the bottom actually goes all the way across of all of the Kickstarter unlocks. Oh, wow. So you got the three-dimensional terrain. You've got the traps, uh, more different uh, enemy types. Oh, this is so awesome. One, two, three, four, five. It shows um, like hero type. It's the blue plastic, like hero type models it's got the various different traps in the game which i thought was really cool that was one of the things i thought was an awesome add-on so here you can see kind of like the little bear trap uh trap here's a 3d rendering of like a spike trap so that's really awesome what was this one is this like a block is this the block trap yet yeah, um i think this was like the crushing block trap like just like a big block that draw i think that's what this was like a big block and it's got little like bones and organs and things all like sculpted into the top of it which is really cool again you can check all this out on the miniature cam as we're going up close with it here's like some uh here's like a really cool flag with some skulls on it again i can't remember what all this stuff exactly is for here is i believe some type of like magic type trap Oh, these are so awesome. They look so good. Now, the other thing that I want to check here is sometimes, and believe it or not, when you get a lot of these Kickstarter extras, sometimes the miniatures that come in the base game are like on point, and then the ones that come in the the kind of the uh, the extra, like, hey, you just got this because you backed the Kickstarter, aren't always as much on point. Um, these do look just as good. They absolutely look just as good. Really, really nice, high-quality sculpting. There's a ton of detail in these, too. That's what I'm liking, is that once these are... Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to paint all of these. I mean, obviously... No, I'm just going to say I'm not. There's just too many miniatures here. I'm not going to paint all this. However, I will paint probably the main um, characters in the game, the main heroes, and probably some of the main enemies I'll probably paint up. The rest of these I'll probably just do a spray basing uh and then maybe just maybe just wash them just to really bring out all the all the detail versus just having the gray plastic now this is a little bit of a darker gray plastic which sometimes makes some of that detail kind of hard to see and i would say in these it it, it is that i think if these were done in a lighter gray plastic you would have seen a little bit more of that detail in the model definitely you can see it you just got to look up close to be able to see it because it's dark like sitting on the table you're not going to really get a lot of that detail it's not really going to come out in the model okay this looks fantastic love love the yeah, so glad i'm so glad i backed this on kickstarter because look at all this extra stuff that you got i mean this whole box just by backing the base again i didn't go all in and get everything i just backed the base got this giant box with it and you know I, i've really started to make the decision on some of these larger games if i really really like it I'll back the base, I'll get all the extra Kickstarter stuff, and then, you know what? If I like it and I find myself really playing it a lot, then I'll go in and I'll pick up the expansions. A lot of the times, unless it's a Kickstarter exclusive expansion, a lot of the times the expansions on these, you can come back and get them in retail later on. You're not missing out on anything because you got the Kickstarter extras when you back the base game. That's how I'm going to do it, team, go forward. I just, I can't do this anymore where I'm where I'm backing it, and here comes, like, six boxes full of stuff, and then, you, you know, you play the game four or five times, if that, and then you've just got all this material sitting around, right? It's like, I'd rather just get just enough to experience the whole game, play it a bunch, really, really get into it, and then feel like, okay, I'm ready for that expansion maybe a year later, Okay. So just something to keep in mind with these bigger platforms like this where you get like just box after box after box of stuff. All you're doing is giving your, your money to companies so they can just, for the next five years, they're going to release expansions. You're basically just prepaying for that. Are you going to play all that stuff? Ah, I don't know. You're not going to know until you really play the base game and you get a feel for it. So that's what I did here, and I'm glad that I did because I wouldn't 
I've got this. I almost went retail, but I'm glad that I did because I the the Kickstarter extras that came with this, absolutely fantastic. So awesome. Okay, tons more enemies here is what we're getting. And then, oh, here we got some special plastic in this one. So here's another nice three-dimensional uh, terrain piece, which is like a cage. That is really cool. Can that open? Yes, it can open up and I can put something in it. So that's someone getting caged. That's pretty awesome. You've got, oh, these pieces look fantastic. Look at these stone. Are these, these are, are these the altars? I'm not sure. I don't think these are the altars, but this nice stone pillar terrain piece, really high um, sculpting on all this stuff. Ah, oh, these pieces look outstanding. Very, very nicely done. Okay, got some more of the heroes here in that blue, that nice blue plastic, which really brings out. Let me see this dwarven character. Oh yes. Uh, hang on, that's not a dwarven. I don't think that's a dwarven character. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Um, looks absolutely awesome though. And again, that lighter plastic is what really brings out the detail on these sculpts. Um, versus that dark. I really wish they would have done the enemies in not such a dark plastic. Go with like more of a lighter gray plastic and bring that detail out. Here's the only one in the uh, the game that has sort of the translucent plastic, which is the, uh, what is this? This is like the fire, um, some kind of fire demon or something, but it looks pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. All right. It's the only one in here that looks like that. So that was a, a Kickstarter special. Ew, this one looks so awesome. Oh, what a great sculpt on that. And that's another thing that I will call out with this. Really, really well done. Not only the detail of the sculpting, sculpting, but the kind of the dynamic feel of the of the posing as well is done really, really good in this game. Nothing feels nothing feels generic, you know? It, it all has a very unique oh, just a giant like wear rat abomination this thing's crazy looking nothing has like this generic feel to it at all it all feels very fresh uh and new and that's one thing that you got to know about these games i mean how many dungeon crawler adventure kind of games are out there a lot alter quest it's another one however if you're gonna get another one you want to make sure that there's mechanics in that game that are a little bit different and are going to feel a little bit fresh. The Alter Quest definitely has that from a mechanic perspective. And you're also going to want to make sure that your enemies, your heroes, everything about it feels fresh and feels different. And it's not just another, oh, here's a bunch of skeletons. Here's a bunch of, you know, whatever, right? Take your pick. This has ve This title has very unique enemies and sculpts that I think will give you a different feel uh, from a fantasy perspective and it will make it fun to play and feel a little bit different if maybe you just happen to get done with another type of adventure crawler right before you pull this one out and you go through this. So that's been a quick unboxing of everything that we have here in both the base game for Alter Quest and the Kickstarter exclusive box unreal how much you got here in the kickstarter stuff with this one this one was a real i hope you i hope team you, you didn't miss out on this one this one i think was a real really good value for what you ended up getting again we probably will do some gameplay in the future we won't go into the components or how it works and all that It'd just be let's play the game and see how it plays out and have fun with it so until then hit that like click the subscribe below to join the team keep rolling then chris this has been the mcguire review and we'll see you next time.